A vinyl trend that no one thought would be back is back. Let's get into it. One of the most unexpected reissues to come out in recent years really is that the Beatles are going to be doing this big reissue campaign around their red and blue compilation albums for their 50th anniversary. Uh, previously following all these huge kind of reissues and like making a really big deal out of anniversaries for like Sgt. Pepper's, The White Album, uh, Abbey Road, these albums that are obviously super iconic and super beloved. But it just seems kind of odd that they were doing this for essentially Grey's Hits records where it's like I didn't think really anyone had the same affinity versus like a normal Beatles record. Started to think back though and I realized, you know what, I actually have a bit of affinity for these records. Uh, they were the way I got into the Beatles. Uh, my parents played the blue uh, CD in the car all the time. So I mean, I get it, there is some love for these records, but it just seems kind of unusual because there's like millions of these kicking around. You can usually get them pretty cheap still. They were reissued not that long ago, maybe like 10 years. But you know what, maybe this is a sign that greatest hits records and best ofs, compilation albums are back and I think there's a number of reasons for this. Uh, a while back I put together a video of my uh, picks for Record Store Day Black Friday and I also noticed a couple things that I thought were kind of interesting. One was that there is going to be a Post Malone Greatest Hits album that is going to be released for that day. Uh, digging more into the list I also found that the Jonas Brothers are also going to be putting out best of compilations. Um, these are interesting because they're clearly very targeted at a newer vinyl collector, not like a 60 year old who's been into the hobby for a long time. It seems that every other day there's a new Greatest Hits compilation that's been announced. Uh, today there was a Killer's Greatest Hits compilation announced for example. I wanted to kind of dig into where this started and why it's kind of emerged here and why it suddenly is really a thing. Um, the first instance that I really knew about a Greatest Hits album being kind of pushed as a vinyl release was when uh, the White Stripes did their greatest hits in 2020. Uh, this was the first time that Jack White and Meg White had kind of gone back together since uh, the White Stripes dissolved. Uh, there was this huge media push around it. There is like giveaways and all these like different things going on at record stores around the world. It was a big deal, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, Grace Hits compilations obviously aren't new. Um, classic Grace Hits compilations often do get reissued. And I mean, there's Grace Hits compilations, there's Grace Hits playlists that come out all the time, but Nothing that was really, to me, a big deal as far as like a vinyl release. Um, there were some interesting notes in the press release that Third Man Records put out around the White Stripes uh, Greatest Hits though. They said, in an era of streaming when the idea of a Greatest Hits album may seem irrelevant, that's an act's most streamed songs are considered their de facto hits. We wholeheartedly believe that great bands deserve greatest hits and that a large part of Third Man Records and the White Stripes success has been built on zigging when the rest of the music business is zagging. Thus, for a great band with great fans, a Greatest Hits compilation for the White Stripes is not only appropriate, but absolutely necessary. There's a few things that I thought were really interesting when that was put out because I remember yeah, Jack White saying no one puts out Greatest Hits compilations anymore, which was largely true. When you think about it, a Greatest Hits compilation is kind of anti what the vinyl revival is all about where we have been given so much convenience with access to unlimited songs, unlimited playlists, unlimited albums where now we want to say no, I actually want to only listen to this one album, I want to sit down with it, listen to it in its entirety, soak it in, I want to look at the album artwork in large in large format, I want to read liner notes, like that's the experience I want. I don't just want to be able to click around and hear just the best songs whenever I want them. Um, when they talked about like the convenience of it, yeah, it's like artists always have like their best of playlist that they put out themselves or I mean the hell you can make your own favorite <laughs> uh, compilation of all the tracks you like from an artist like it shouldn't be on vinyl really when you think about it. But that's the thing that I think we've gone wrong about the vinyl revival. Uh, something that I have always recommended to people who are getting into records, particular as a way to save money, build their collection with great titles, and get stuff that they want to play consistently is to go for greatest hits titles. Um, one of the first records I bought when I got into vinyl was uh, Changes One Bowie. I got this at a garage sale for two bucks. Um, I'm gonna be honest, when I got this, I think I played this just about every day for like two or three months. Uh, I slowly saved up some money. I was able to find uh, decent condition, affordable versions of those albums that uh, the tracks are from, and I was able to get those, but 
Without the Grace Hits compilation, I don't know if I would have fallen as much in love with those songs and then wanted to buy those albums. I always tell new collectors, go buy Grace Hits collections because oftentimes they sold in huge abundances. They're not nearly as expensive as like the classic albums by some artists and they're widely available. They're also good. They're greatest hits albums or best ofs. Like the market has shown that these songs are good. So it's, you're gonna get best bang for your buck. If you wanna just get in the habit of listening to music on your turntable, like this is kind of the best way to do it. And for that reason, I've kind of always tried to push people towards that direction. And honestly, for me, I think that this trend might be really cool because like I started to get really, really into music in like the 2010s. There are hundreds of albums that I love, but it's just not realistic for me to get them all on vinyl. They're usually very expensive. Some of them have never been pressed on vinyl. Some of them have only had one or two pressings. They're skyrocketing in price. You almost never find them on the used market. Um, it's tough for me to rationalize it oftentimes, but maybe a compilation, yeah, I could see myself grabbing that. So I mean, honestly, this is something that I hope continues to grow. Um, I don't know how many people are actually gonna go out and buy the Beatles uh, that, like me, you know, own all these records. But I mean, for a new collector, this might be the opportunity opportunity for them to say, hey, this one has all these great songs on it. I can just get the one and then I can maybe eventually get the other ones down the road. So I think this is awesome. I'd love to see more of it. Um, maybe I'm completely wrong here. Maybe Grace Hits albums really never did go away on vinyl. And uh, let me know what you think about them. Let me know if there's any Grace Hits that you would love to see in the near future. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.